So now let's take a, a look at number six. So the exam question is not going to be exactly like this, but it is going to be some kind of geometry problem. Um, so it says find the vol they all work kind of the same. Um, th so in the sense that I will make clear in one second. So find the volume of a pyramid with height h uh, and base and equilateral triangle with side two. So let me try to draw a picture of this little booger. Um, so this is um, an equilateral triangle kind of in perspective. So that's the base and the side length is A. And it's saying that the height, oh sorry, it's not A, it's 2. In the book it's A, but I changed it to 2 to try to make the problem easier. And I will now kind of make this little pyramid that's supposed to be, you know, invisible or whatever. And so you can see it has three sides, right? So can you see the front side, the back side, the left side? And what we're trying to do is find the volume of this thing, and it also has some height. So we're using h to stand for the height. So since h is a parameter, the answer is going to be some function of h. So we're going to have something like um, 2h, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, I'm just making that up. But the point is that the expression for the answer is still going to have h in it. Um, all right. So how do you start? Well, this is the first thing that you should look to when you try to do one of these problems is the area of a slice method, because that's the easiest. So let me draw kind of a slice here. If my terrible drawing will um, let me look at a slice. So do you believe, I hope you believe, because it's true, that a slice is going to be an equilateral triangle which in math sometimes we abbreviate with a cool uh, cool name, equilat. And now um, we have to somehow find a way to describe these things. So they're going to need to depend on uh, somehow on like the height, right? So we can call x, let's call x, we'll call x the height up to where the slice is. And so now the area of this thing is just going to be a function of x. We don't know what it is now, but we will find out what it is in a second. And the answer to the problem is just the sum of all the slices um, as the height goes from down here is this is the zero height, and up here is the height h, right? So the sum of all the slices is they go from zero up to h. So now the goal is to try to find some kind of expression for this. And how could you do it? Can this makes me the most comfortable? So I will draw some axes, some x, y axes. Now I've had some trouble explaining this because the way I like to slap this thing on the axes is maybe on, only clear in my own brain. Um, but I want to draw a picture of a triangle like this. Or, so sorry, this is this is the triangle in two dimensions, but it's really the pyramid. So you know, I don't know. Imagine like the observer is over here, like behind the thing or something, and he's looking at the pyramid, and all he can see first is like the sharp bridge of the nose, and that's what we're seeing here, right? And he's also like died and fallen over or something, because now it's tilted over to the it's tilted a little bit. But I hope that's clear. And so. What this guy is seeing here is the the back, right? Um, so this for him is the back, and for us in this picture, that's going to be this. Okay. So that means that this um, this part is one, right? And this part is also one because the length of the whole back is two. And what what about this uh, for him? So for for this guy that's just going to be h, so we're going out h here, so this is actually literally the point h on the x-axis, all right, and what are we doing with um, the x here, how does he see this x, well he sees this x as being some value like this, right, and um, so what about how does he see this little piece of the slice, well he sees that little piece of the slice as that line, which is not supposed to be diagonal. Wow, this is much easier with all these uh, technological things. 
So what we really have to do is we, we need to find the side of uh, the equilateral slice, which is really just this, okay? And so this is the way in which all these problems are the same. Usually it amounts to just finding the equation for this top line, okay? Um, so let me see if I can trace it here in this weird color, okay? And all right, um, so this is a line. So let me just write down what do lines always look like? Lines always look like uh, y equals mx plus b. And, okay, so you can tell me right off the bat what b is, if you remember your, your anatomy of lines, right? b is just the place where the line touches the y-axis. So we know that b is 1. So we know that this is the line y equals mx plus 1. And uh, so the hard thing now is to find m. What is m? m is the slope, which is the rise over the run. Okay, and we have this nice little section with some things labeled. So look, um, if I take if I take h as the run, then on that run it go the rise changes by one. It goes down, right? So the rise is going to be negative one because it goes down by one as you go over by h. So that tells me m. And now I'm I'm really in business. So this is minus x over h plus 1. And Ermagerd, I just found, what did I just find? So if this is an input and this is the function, then just the value of the function tells me this. OK? So what this is, this is how high this function shoots x, which is just the value of the function. OK? And um, so the whole back side is going to be two of those, right? There's another one down here. So if I come back up here to my equilateral triangle, this is going to be two times the line function, which is minus x over h plus 1. Minus x over h plus 1. It's supposed to be an h here. OK. And uh, wonder bar. So um, now I have to somehow come up with the area of an equilateral triangle based on one of its sides. And I just happen to know, uh, or I did yesterday anyway, what the formula for that is. I think it's 4 over the square root of 3 times the side uh, squared. But since we're in computer land, um, we can just do a quick check here. So let me Google this real quick. Um, so area of, you could also reason it out, but um, reasoning is hard and blah, 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 blah. What is it going to tell us? Here it is. Okay, so sorry. yeah, it's a good thing I checked because I had it, I had the reciprocal, right? So it's square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. So this should be the other way around. So let me erase this. Where's my, there he is. So square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. All right, and so here is our s, right? It's just one side of the equilateral triangle, which is this. So we have um, the area of, a slice at x is square root of 3 over 4 times 2 um, times minus x over h plus 1 squared. All right, so you can't beat that. And let me um, copy this and paste it so I can, I can drag it down to my layer here where we have a little bit more room to work. Hope you can even see this green color. So I'll drag it down here, and now I have to I have to talk. Oh, I forgot to. I lost the square. So now I have to actually integrate this thing. Maybe I can clean it up a little bit first because I noticed that this two and this four are going to cancel. So this is the same thing as square root of three over four times four because this square hits that right, and um, minus x over h plus one 
squared algebra is awesome, square root of 3 times minus x over h plus 1 squared, and that is a of x, and this is exactly what we have to integrate, so we'll, we'll just integrate this, we'll put the square root of 3 out here, um, from 0 to h, and so you could even multiply this thing out, or you could do u sub, let's get crazy and use u substitution. So minus x over h plus 1 uh, squared dx. And now I, I always like to do u substitution in red. And let's do u equals minus x over h plus 1. Then du is equal to minus 1 over h dx, which means that um, minus h times du is equal to dx. Now I can replace him with uh, this can replace this stuff with this guy, and uh, the square root of 3, the integral from, okay, now the limits have changed, you put the 0 in for x, and that gives you 1, you put the h in for x, and that gives you uh, zero, 0, okay, and now I do the substitution, do the hokey pokey, turn yourself around, and here's minus h, and here's du, and so what's left to do here? Let's take this constant, con take this constant h out, and turn the so the constant h comes out like this. And let me leave the um, limits upside down for a second and put u squared du. Now this is kind of weird that the bigger number is on the bottom. You can flip those, but it makes a negative one uh, come out, so that can cancel this negative. You go from 0 to 1, u squared du, and almost done. Where did it go? There it is. So now we just do um, h squared to 3, take the antiderivative, which is u cubed over 3, and the limits go from 0 to 1. But when you plug in 0, it's 0, and so it's really just, this whole thing is just 1 third. So the answer is h root 3 over 3, otherwise known as h over root 3, and that's it. Okay. What did I do down here? Didn't I solve this thing or something? Oh, I just, I said, why don't you do it? Well, okay. So the answer is h over root 3, and that's all. So I'm going to stop.